Dick, you've been very entrepreneurial in your business over the years with uh, 50 books in publication and many workshops, etc. If you were actively building a career practice now, what activities would you focus on? Well, I love to train other counselors. I, I love to, because the payoff is much greater than when you just work with individuals. You have a chance to influence countless number of people that come through the counselor's hands over the years if you tra just train one counselor. So I, I like that a lot. I like, to, I like to train professionals and help them to be even better than they have been in what they're doing. Um, and I like to write. I, I just love to write. I like to get better and better at writing. I, I like to go over familiar chapters in Parachute from previous years and rewrite those paragraphs so they're more beautiful and so on. So I suppose I'm in rehab. I like to rehab words and I like to <laughs> rehab counselors and so on. So if you were now starting a practice, you'd, you'd focus on those kinds of things. What about the whole online environment? What would you do about that? How do you see that working with Well, it, it's, a, uh, it's a blessing and a curse. Um, I can find out things on the internet I never could find out before the internet. Um, I'll give you a very good example. I wanted to know how many jobs get filled during the month. Now, the government will tell you, here in the U.S., the government will tell you how many um, net changes there were in the job force. They'll say 736,000 jobs were added this month. That's net. That means a certain number were lost, a certain number were added. The net is 736. My curiosity was what happens in between the 30-day period that they do those uh, samplings. Uh, and I found out, one day I was looking on the internet and it said, oh, we're going to hold a press conference tomorrow when we release the unemployment figures. And you can ask any question you want. So I said, okay. Um, how many jobs get filled during the month in between the soundings that the unemployment report talks about. And it turned out to be seven to eight million. And I found that is on a website um, called Job Openings and Labor Turnover. Uh, it's Jolt, J-O-L-T, Job Openings and Labor Turnover. And I discovered they do that for every month. They usually one or two months behind. They'll be doing March now, and this is May. So um, I learned I can learn things on the internet I never could learn before. And secondly, um, we used to call what we needed as job hunters networking. We used to call it job, uh, contacts and so on. You need contacts. I don't think of them in that, those terms. I think of them as bridge people. That is to say, they form a bridge between us and the company. They, they know us and they know our work, but these same people know that company. And trying to figure out who those people would be was a deuce of a job. It just was horrible before the internet came along. You had to kind of go to parties and gatherings and uh, meetings and just collect business cards like they were baseball cards. And then you'd say, well, hopefully somewhere in there is a bridge person I'm going to need. But with the internet, you have LinkedIn and a, a wonderful site. And you can go there and you can say, I'm, I'm interested in who among my acquaintances ever worked at this company. You put the company in, it has a company profile, and it will tell you a whole history of people involved in that company. So tasks that are important for the job hunter, have always been important for the job hunter, now are much, much easier to do because there is the internet. On the other hand, um, you, you mentioned anything that the job hunter may need and the internet is a siren song to scam artists and so on to come. Um, they have, in, in the state of Florida alone, caught something like 950,000 fraudulent filings for 
uh, income tax refunds uh, last year uh, and about one million whatever went through because identity theft is so easy. You find out somebody's social security number, their name and uh, age and bingo. You can use it for all kinds of fraudulent transactions and so on. So the internet is dangerous if people don't take seriously that they are putting themselves in jeopardy whenever they go on the internet. Uh, I've had my identity stolen. I, most of my friends have had their identity stolen and sometimes it's the easiest thing to do. And so I caution people, for example, when they post their resume on, on the internet, never to put their address, never to put a, a, a phone number, just put a, an email address because that could be anywhere in the world. But they shouldn't give anybody a way to locate them and that sort of thing. So I, I like the internet, I love the internet, I go to it all the time. If my wife and I watch movies, because I'm a, a cinemaphile, um, if we watch movies, I'll go and look up the movie on Wikipedia to find out what year it was produced and where it was shot and stuff like that. So if you're a curious person, you have to love the Internet. You have to say, well, the Internet's wonderful, but, but it also has its dangers, and so you just have to take it the good with the bad and the bad with the good. Hmm.